Hello everybody, Clint Seeley here. Today I would like to bring you, it's not really a tutorial in uh, the aspect that you can use it right now, but it's in response to a lot of questions that I've seen on some of the message boards and a lot of questions um, that I've been receiving personally from my students and members regarding Bernina's new multi-needle E16 embroidery machine. I've had questions all about the compatibility of V7 and how it's going to integrate with that new machine. Many of you know that the Bernina E16 is basically the same exact machine as the Melco uh, Bravo or the Melco Amaya XTS machine. Um, as far as physical components, I believe they're identical with the exception of a few changes that have been made uh, in the hook area that don't really affect anything that I'm aware of yet. The reason for this is, as many of you may or may not know, about a year and a half, two years ago, Bernina International bought Melco International. Melco out of Denver, Colorado is not only do they make a very fine uh, embroidery machine, a multi-needle embroidery that machine that's made right here in the USA. They are also a software firm. A lot of you know this and it has left you wondering, well, what is going to happen to Ber the Bernina Embroidery Software uh, version 7 down the road? How long is it going to be before uh, the architects at Melco are now designing the embroidery software uh, for uh, Bernina based on the Melco uh, design shop platform. I don't really know how that's all going to play out. Um, I'm sure it only makes logical sense that eventually the Bernina embroidery software is going to be a Melco product and not a Wilcom uh, product. But here we are now with the release of the E16 and a lot of you are wondering about it. Um, this awesome machine, can I bring this into my home and start a home-based embroidery uh, business based on my, uh, my passion for uh, embroidery? Well, you certainly can. <clears throat> based on the questions that I've had, I'm going to record a few tutorials that address um, some of the, the incompatibility issues of V7 with the new machine because the new machine, the E16, is being advertised as a professional level machine, an at-home business uh, that you can start. And there's a few things that I feel need to be added to the Bernina embroidery software, especially with lettering. If you're going to really handle this machine in a commercial capacity, if you're going to go into, if you're going to buy the E16 and become a commercial embroiderer. Um, there are some things that you need to understand about how lettering works, specifically with caps. I'll record other tutorials down the road to kind of shed some light on some of the questions I've seen. Um, but today, what I'd really like to talk about is lettering, specifically with caps. If you're buying this big multi-needle machine and you're not going to also buy a hat, uh, a, a hat driver, okay and some hat hoops so you can do caps you're kind of really missing the boat but that's fine if you're if you're just an extreme hobbyist an extreme passionate embroiderer and you don't care about caps then you can pretty much disregard this video entirely go get your go get that machine and just have fun but if you're gonna if you're gonna also want to turn this into a business and do caps you need to understand them, some things about lettering that you've probably never been exposed to because at this point you're an at-home uh, embroiderer and we're working on, a, on, on flats. Everything you put in hoops and everything's done as a flat. With a hat hoop, everything's done on a cylinder. Everything's done on a round. So the way that lettering and logos have to embroider out are kind of completely different than everything that you've been used to so far. Today we're going to talk about lettering. So here all I've done is brought up V7 and I've uh, used some of the new features of V7 
to put onto my uh, background a pink cap. This is just for demonstration purposes so you can get, give yourself a really good visual example of what this would look like. Say I have just bought the, um, the, B, the E16 and I've taken on my first hat job and it's a company down the road or a friend of yours that wants to get some hats done for his or her business. Well, you're gonna just load the program and then we would go to the digitize, go to lettering, okay? And then we'll just click the lettering on here and I'm just gonna type it in as text logo. Hit enter and there's your text logo. Now you slap that on the hat and you're thinking, well, this can be a little bit, this can look a little bit better. Well, it certainly can. I'll just go to the edit and on edit, we can start edit, editing some of these points. But in this particular situation, I think I want to do, I want to change the baseline. Right now, default, the baseline is flat like this. I want to round, I want to put a little bit of an arc inside my logo. So I'm just going to bring up the properties box and change the baseline to something like this. Hit apply. Does that look good? That looks good, but maybe we have a little bit too much of an arc. Okay, this is kind of how the design process goes. So let me just grab the logo and we'll go back to the edit node and you can see your options have changed. I can now grab this little dude right here, watch this. I can change on the fly, I can change the spacing of the logo or of the text to where it, lo it looks exactly the way that you want it to look. Right here in the middle, I can also go in and out changing how dramatic that baseline arc is. And you can visually, you can do this visually with this hat as the background, which is a really cool thing. That looks good. So I'm just gonna, oops, I'm sorry. Ah. I'm just going to settle with this right here. And you're thinking, okay, that is easy. Boom, done, let's send it to the machine. Er, hold on, it doesn't work that way. Let me show you why. Let's do a, I'm just gonna do a slow redraw of this logo. Let me slow it down. And you can see how naturally the program by default starts at this first T right here, then goes to the E. And what's happening with hats? With hats that are on a cylindrical plane and they're moving around on that cylinder, on that round, as this logo is being embroidered from left to right, there might be many times there is some puckering that'll go on with the fabric of the hat itself. So as this is moving from left to right, about right in here, you'll get a little pucker in the cap and it can actually get sewn together and it completely ruins the cap. That's why one of the very first and most important rules for you as a new embroiderer to learn is this logo, this text logo, if it's going on a cap, needs to be created a little bit differently. And here's where we run into a little bit of a limitation problem with the Bernina embroidery software. It can still be done, it just takes more manual editing to set yourself up for the best success. Ideally, this is the way that we want it to go. We would want the hat, the design, to start in the middle close to the seam. Okay, either start with this T or this L. If we break this logo apart, we can then have the L go, the O go, the G, then the, then the last O, but then it's gonna need to come back and start at this T, then go to the X, and go to the E, and then to the T. This type of sewing direction will eliminate that puckering that will be going on in this hat and you won't be ruining hats. Doing it the other way by default, you're gonna ruin a lot of hats, you're gonna pull your hair out in frustration, and then you're also going to have a lot of jump stitches all over the place. V7 wasn't really designed for hats in mind. Wilcom, based on this same exact platform, Wilcom also has a standalone product called Embroidery Studio that, that includes a couple little options that you can just simply click one or two buttons and the program will redesign this logo to be perfect. V7 I thought that they would uh, push out an update to include those features, but they haven't. And according to some things that I heard at Bernina, come out of Bernina University, there's no plans for that to happen. Now that's rumor and I could be wrong about that. But let me show you 
real quickly what we need to do for this simple text logo if we're going to put it on a hat inside V7. You need to look at the color film and you can see everything is one element right here. We're going to break that. We need to break this apart. So we'll break it apart and that has broken it broken it breaking. It's broken it apart into two into the two letters. Now logo is naturally going to be correct. The L will go, the O, the G, the O, so we can pretty much leave that one alone for right now. Text, however, if I do a if I do a redraw on this, remember, that's backwards. So what I have to do if I'm going to do this simple text logo is I have to break this one apart into the separate letters and then I'm going to have to reorganize the letters themselves to where it starts with the T, the X, the E, then this T. So we need to break that dude apart again and then we'll just go down to the last T which is this one and I'm going to move that T back to where it's the first thing that goes. Okay. Then I need to do the same thing with the X. I need to move that back. Okay. See it needs to be T, X. So that X is second. Then the E. Let me move that E back. Okay. So now let's do a slow redraw and let's see how all of this goes. T, X, E, T. Then it's going to come back and do L, O, G, O. That is correct. You're not completely done. You're not completely out of the woods because you're also going to have to change the entry and exit points of each one of these letters because you reorganized them. They were modified to go from left to right. So you can see here, if this T is first, let me go into the edit. You can see the start point is here and the exit point is here. Those need to be swapped. So not only do you have to bust apart the lettering and reorganize the lettering, you're going to need to also manually change for each letter the entry and exit point of each letter so you don't have jump stitches all over the place and things look a little more professional. So this is kind of a hack around, but it's, it's time consuming. See, this is what I would have to do. I would want... I would want my start point to be on this side, on the right side, and then it would exit here. And then we're going to want this X to start right in here. Okay, let's see. So then I'll have to deselect, select the X, and then go to the reshape or the edit. And you can see this is the end point. The start point needs to be where the end point is. So see, I have to, I have to manually change each one of these. Okay, like so. All right. Then we'll deselect, select the E and go to the edit or the reshape and you can see the entry points over here which is wrong it needs to be here and then the exit point needs to be there okay then I'll deselect and I'll select the T and we'll go to the edit and yeah I know what you're thinking you're thinking oh my goodness this is gonna take so much time if there's a lot of lettering you know there could be a second line of text well, it, you know, it's worth a little extra work if you're going to be doing, you know, 20, 30, 40 hats or something like that. If you're doing hats as one-offs, this can be a little bit frustrating. So here's the start point, and then here's going to be the finish. Here's going to be the exit point. Now, something else that you really can't do um, with V7, say you want the, you, you have bought a multi-needle commercial embroidery machine that has an automatic cutter in it and it'll switch to the next color. If you don't want to, after each one of these hats that you do, if you don't want to be in here clipping all of the running stitches, okay, which I know none of you want to do, you want to literally hit the hit the button, walk away, let the, the hat finish and not be spending all of your time clipping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight running stitches, okay, for every single one of these hats. The machine will do it itself, but with V7, you really can't manually program in thread trims you, that'll trigger the machine to stop and cut the thread between each letter, leaving this whole logo looking perfect. You can't really do that with V7, okay? So do keep that in mind. You're gonna have to clip all of those running stitches as well. You can hack around it only so much because as great as this software program is, 
the user interface and the tools were never really intended for commercial grade hats okay when when they went through all of this they really didn't have this vision in mind and probably are not going to pay all of the extra licensing fees to Wilcom now that they own their own uh, company to add those features back in but that's how it's done now by comparison I own a Bravo which is the same exact machine as the E16 and when you buy a Bravo or an Amaya XT it comes with its own it included not bought separately it comes with its own digitizing package that um, while not as user friendly on the user interface as V7 as far as text goes setting text up uh, the tools are much more powerful and let me show you what we've just done here let me show you the difference between the Melco program and V7 so let me minimize here and I'm gonna bring up design shop okay and this is just what design shop is if I want to create a text logo for a customer I would go in that you see it looks pretty much the same as far as a lot of the tools go and I'm gonna click on the screen and type in text logo I'll hit enter okay and then from right here I can change my baseline to an arc and I can grab this handlebar and I can change the arc right on the fly and I can send this straight to the machine too but I can also change where the connections are as digitized bottom connect or closest point to emit to minimize those jump stitches but here's something else I can do if I don't want to be clipping jump stitches all over the place I can just bring up my properties right here and see where it says text logo between each letter I can manually put in a thread trim that'll trigger the machine to stop trim the thread eliminate the jump stitch and then move on see I could put one there then after the E I would click and put one in there put one in here and put one in here okay you can just manually pop those thread trims in so you're not trimming threads also because this is a professional grade commercial product I can also change the horizontal stitch order right on the fly see left to right right to left or from the inside out so just by clicking that button and then changing the vertical stitch order from bottom to up and hit apply I have now changed my logo to automatically that's all I had to do and now it'll start from the L the O the G the O then come back from the T X E T and it'll trim all the threads in between boom it literally takes in this situation it just takes one minute for you to create a logo send it straight to the machine so that is some of the things that you should you should know ahead of time kind of what you're getting yourself into uh, you already own v7 so there's no reason to invest any money into another product but you do need to understand when it comes to text logos you're gonna have to do a lot of extra work okay instead of going left to right you need to be going from the inside out back to the inside out and then you'll need to change the entry and exit points of each one of these letters okay it's an operation that you'll get used to it'll probably end up taking you 10 or 15 minutes as opposed to one minute um, but that you know that's just one little thing that you all should be understanding that's about it for text lettering on caps via v7 this is clint seeley and thank you for watching